So while at this point I think it's fair to say that Putin dramatically underestimated the level of resistance he was going to face in Ukraine, and this has become somewhat of a military disaster, it's also at this point probably fair to say too that the Western world overestimated the impact that these economic and political sanctions were going to have on Russia. And now we see Russia and China moving towards a new world order. What precisely does this mean and what is the outlook for this situation? Let's examine what has been going on over the past few days. I'm Stuart Hooper, a lecturer in political science and PhD researcher. Please subscribe if you are new here to the channel where I'm putting out a lot of critical content focused on current affairs. And most importantly, not coming at this from the left or from the right. We're trying to have a non-partisan critical understanding of the world so we can actually come about... Um, and figure out what is really going on here, and perhaps even some solutions. So please subscribe if you are new. You can also follow me at the links below on other social media platforms. So what has gone on over the last few days? We have potentially seen a complete shift, or the beginnings of a complete shift, in world order. Now this has come about as a result of what the West tried to do to Russia with its economic and political sanctions. It tried to essentially cut Russia out of the world, exclude it, uh, put it into a position of persona non grata. Um, well, what we see that has got on as this situation has developed is that Russia really is depended upon by a lot of countries around the world for a very important commodity, and that being energy. So we need to take a look at what's gone on here, and we should start off with this particular tweet, which comes from none other than my current uh, PhD supervisor, Dr. Energy Palmer, who tweeted to this article, Putin and Xi exposed the great illusion of capitalism. And you can see the quotes that he chose from this. Unless the US and its allies mobilize, the second great age of globalization is coming to a catastrophic close. In other words, how the world has operated for really about the last 50 years is coming to an end. Meaning that the entire world being reliant upon the West, specifically the United States, really as the key center of the Western world, this whole system could be crumbling. There could be a new global power center that is emerging with Russia, China, and perhaps India and the Middle Eastern states coming together to form a new core entity for the world. And we see that here in this announcement from Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, talking about a new world order with China. And he said, we, together with you, the Chinese, um, and with our sympathizers, will move towards a multipolar, just, democratic world order. Now, we need to be just a little bit critical of this whole idea of a world order. Any entity throughout world history that has tried to apply one singular universalized vision of the world to how it is ordered and how it is structured, has this ever gone in a direction that is just or democratic? Not really. We can look to the horrific historical examples, Nazi Germany, of course, the Japanese Empire, um, or we could look to the ones that people tend to have a more rose-tinted view of, let's say, to say the least, uh, the British Empire and the American Empire as it currently exists today. Um, did the British Empire and the American Empire, did they spread a just and democratic world order? I certainly do not think so. So this whole idea as a concept of one entity trying to change the whole of the world 
This has to kind of, I think, go away. We have to push ourselves away from this idea of globalism. Um, now, I'm not necessarily coming out and saying nationalism is the solution to this. I'm not 100% sure what the solution is. Um, but it's clear that globalism, trying to apply a universalized vision of the world to absolutely every square inch of the planet, this never goes well. Well, let me take that back. It goes well for a very small set of certain special interest groups, a certain set of elites in the world that happen to be aligned with that globalized system. For most people, it tends to be a terrible situation or at least a not so good situation. So let's get away from this whole idea of globalism. But how precisely did the West get this wrong with these sanctions and this whole idea of being able to cut Russia out of the world, politically and economically speaking. We saw some very interesting headlines like this one. The EU is going to try to warn China against backing Russia's Ukraine war. But the key thing here, of course, is energy. And we see that this is not just Western Europe, as this headline points to. Japan rules out withdrawal from joint Russian gas project. And a rather stark review of what it might mean for Europe to remove itself from Russian energy. Deutsche Bank CEO sees German recession if Russian gas is cut off. So the Japanese and the Germans have looked at this situation and concluded, quite rightfully, that trying to just drop Russian energy is not going to be a solution to this problem and is actually going to make things worse. Again, what is the root cause here? Globalism. This whole system of economic globalization relying upon other places for all of your most important needs. Well, in a time of crisis, this is what that tends to look like. And I think we should actually take the CEO of Deutsche Bank, I think we should take his warning just a couple of steps further. Um, that wouldn't be just a German recession. You're looking at a global recession. Why? Globalism. All of these banks are interconnected transnationally. And ones that are as big as Deutsche Bank, when they start to fail or even just falter, that has a ripple effect throughout the entire globalized financial system and creates problems throughout the entire globalized system. And another couple of interesting case studies here. Biden rebuffed as US relations with Saudi Arabia and UAE hit new low. As oil prices and diplomatic tensions rise, two of the biggest US allies are questioning the basis of their relationship. You know, you might think if you're the United States and you are this just, democratic, and moral titan in the world, that you, as the Americans, might want to question the basis of the relationship between the US and Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. You might want to have questioned that decades ago, um, because when you join forces with these sorts of places... Um, you lose all of your moral authority. All of those claims that you had that you support democracy um, and a just political system um, and free and fair elections, uh, peaceful right to protest, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, all of this fantastic stuff. Well, when you get in bed with the likes of Saudi Arabia and the UAE, um, when times get tough, um, those forces are going to turn their back on you. Um, because they know why you were really with them in the first place. It wasn't for any of this moralistic rhetoric at all, was it? No. And I think this is a wake-up call for the world. Um, countries do business with other countries to get what they want from them. And they really do not care at all too much about the domestic political system of these foreign lands. As long as it does not stand in opposition to them of course. Um, but now the Saudis, the UAE, they've looked at this situation and they've said, well, you know what? The, uh, the US wants us to 
put out a greater oil output, bring down the price of oil, why bother? Um, the whole world needs oil. Perhaps we can just sell our oil to somebody else. Perhaps we can sell it to the Chinese, the Russians, the Indians, perhaps. Because India, too, another extremely important nation in the world for a number of reasons. Russia praises India for not judging the war in a one-sided way. Or in other words, thank you for not condemning what we have done in Ukraine. And we have an open door for you to join China and the Russians um, in our new world order. And in terms of what that would mean, if those three nations were to join together, Russia, India, and China, and push a new world order, you're looking at somewhere in the region of just under three billion people that are going to be a part of that. That is a serious political and economic and perhaps military force in the world. This is really a dramatic shift in world order. And just in case we needed a bit more evidence in that direction, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, has warned that the sanctions on Russia are threatening to chip away at the dollar's international dominance. Well, why is this? The dollar is perhaps no longer going to be the world reserve currency, meaning the currency that countries primarily use to do international trade, because Russia has been cut out of that system thanks to all of these sanctions. But, as we just examined, Russia still has something incredibly important that the rest of the world needs. Oil and gas. And where there is a will, which there absolutely is, there is a way. And the way that the world is going is away from the dollar and towards these alternative currencies and these alternative payment systems. Just because SWIFT has dominated international finance for decades on end doesn't mean that it can't be replaced with another system that might come out of a Russian, Chinese, Indian, New World order. And what does this all mean for the West? It means that the crumbling state of affairs that we currently live in over here in the Western world is only going to continue to get worse. The potholes in the road are going to continue to grow. The pile of debt is going to continue to grow. The lack of hope for future meaningful employment um, that lack of hope is only going to grow. It's only going to get worse. Um, this overall, everyone, is a really sad state of affairs. Um, it's a result of politicians, elites that have taken the world down this path um, for decades, this path of globalization, which has favored corporate interests at the expense of literally everyone and everything else meaning national governments, national power. All of that has been sacrificed on the altar of globalism. So our leaders got us here, and now we're going to have to deal with it, and we're going to have to bear the brunt of it, because they're certainly not. Um, Jeff Bezos is certainly not. He's going to have more bridges dismantled so he can get his luxury yacht in and out of cities. Um, you... Are not going to be able to pay the mortgage. You are not going to be able to get a promotion. Um, you are not going to be able to afford to fill up um, the gas tank in your car. You are not going to be able to afford to put your kids through college. Um, this is uh, where we are, everyone. This is the reality of the world as I currently see it. Um, there's not really too much to be optimistic about right now, if I'm being honest. Um, but we will continue to cover it um, with this reality-based lens for as long as is possible here on this channel. So if you've made it all the way through to the end of this video, please subscribe if you are new here. would love to have you as a regular viewer of the channel. Um, this week, I'm actually doing a few things on social media. Um, I'm doing a couple of uh, radio interviews and I'm also giving um, a public lecture as well. 
Um, so that will be recorded and also uploaded here on this channel for those of you that can't make it out. Um, but yeah, I'm going to continue to push forward here, everyone, and bring the news to you without the rose-tinted glasses. I think we've had enough of that in the Western world, especially. Um, and we need to confront these issues and we need to solve them. So thanks again for watching, everyone, and I'll be back with more soon.